Hey, this is Craig, and this is a short video on online classroom design and organization. A bit of an overview, um, by no means a comprehensive look into how you can, could, or should design your online presence. So, um, so as you go about designing your website, LMS course, or blog, um, you have a lot of decisions about what types of things to put in it, how to construct it. Um, how is it going to work? You kind of have to foresee your audience and your own goals and purposes. So you want to be a little more thoughtful than the three little pigs in their house of hay. So here are some guiding principles that I think help inform those decisions. One, keep it simple and focused. You don't need everything under the sun. Um, you want to keep it focused on the things that people will need and that you will find useful. Two, focus on the needs of the user. What are your students, parents, colleagues most likely going to need? How can they benefit most from the stuff that you put on there? What is going to be most helpful? Um, third, use consistent font, style, etc. So for things like headings, font color, font type, um, try to keep it consistent so it's easy to follow and that the different layers of text are identifiable simply by how you put it on the page. And then the last one, just try to minimize scrolling and clicks. There's a lot of cool stuff you can put on you don't want students to scroll forever. You don't want them to have to click a lot because that can result in problems. So let's look at some examples and what this might look like um, for you. So for one, I'm going to go to my sample Weebly page. And I always recommend adding a contact page. Your contact info should be on the landing page if possible. So for example, here I have my home page, a little intro. Um, welcoming people and then a picture of myself and my contact info email and phone a lot of people are going to want to contact you and try and give them a couple ways to do that and we believe there's a nice way for them to actually email you directly from the page so look for that and try to set that up also with pages and navigation try to make sure that whatever tool you're using has this omnipresent navigation bar so that no matter what page I'm on I can always get back to that other page so you'd set up a page for different courses if you have them or different categories based on what you want to offer so in terms of what you're having your course I think one of the primary um, purposes of having a web presence is for students to get stuff and to know what happened for parents too and one way I like to recommend is to just set up a simple day by day this is what happened and here are the links to it so you can see my example here October 24 to 28 Monday we did this 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 and this Tuesday we did this this and this and then you just keep building for each new week that way if I miss class or need to get download something or complete something I can go right here to do it notice how I included links on here so that if I need the assignment I can get the link right here so that's an important thing to try to get them what they need where they need it links work differently in different tools but if I highlight a word you can pretty much always find a link icon like this and then be able to um, add the website URL or depending on the tool you can add a file and upload a file from there and it will link directly to that file download. And we'll cover more about transferring your stuff in the next lesson but I definitely recommend keeping your stuff in uh, a web-based form so that when you change something at the link you don't have to replace the file in your course. So if you're adding a lot of Word files and PowerPoints I suggest converting those to something like Google Docs first that way you change it in Google Docs you don't have to change it in your website. So, in terms of other stuff, you can keep on your page things that are immediately apparent and how they connect to your content. Like over here, I put on these cards, but I have no idea. It says comma use cards, but it doesn't connect directly with my content. So I'm throwing stuff up here that might be cool, but it doesn't necessarily connect with the other content on the page. So try and make sure there's a flow. If you're adding a picture, what is the purpose of that picture? make sure it makes sense with the page. Same thing with interactive stuff. If I'm adding these comma cards, I'd probably want to put a heading up here and be like, use this to practice your commas like we did on Wednesday. Try and connect that information so that the connection's there. And in terms of embedding video and stuff like that, 
Yeah, this Devil Baby attack is pretty dang funny. I definitely recommend looking at it if you haven't before. But it doesn't really go along with my stuff. So, um, yeah, those are things to keep in mind. Again, this is just kind of an overview for things for you to think about. Another option, and I wanted to show this in Schoology because it's more of an LMS. So when you're setting up your course, one of the things I struggle with Schoology is there's no way to put your contact information at the head page, at least not that I've seen. Um, but you can, in your course, put a folder for handouts. So you can add a folder and put in all the stuff that you want. And you can also make your calendar for stuff that's due. So on Wednesday the 7th, I can open this up and I could choose event or assignment and down here I could say we did oops, this and then I could post the link if I want to there's a link down here I could add a file again I'd be achieving what the primary need for my students and parents is probably going to be is what do we do where can I get it inform me give me access to it alright so you can mess around with a lot of this stuff what do you want to show do you want to show all these assignments, files, links, discussions, albums, pages? If you're not using albums, hide it so that the student doesn't see it. So you basically want to keep it clean, focused, to the point, accessible, useful, all of those things. Think about it from the lowest end user. If you're somebody who is technologically deficient and going to your site, would you be able to navigate it? Would you be able to find what you want? If you can't say for sure, yes or no, then you might want to think about redesigning it. In the end, you should be good to go, and the big bad wolf will not blow your house down. Thanks for listening.